Tell me your name. Major Christopher Summers. You're my father? I don't believe it. I won't believe it. My father's dead. What's up, folks? It's Dr. Remy LeBeau, and I'm coming at you once again from the x -Layer to provide you my thoughts on one of the most pressing questions that nobody's been asking. And that is whether or not a Starjammers film could be as successful as Guardians of the Galaxy. Stay tuned for my thoughts. With the success of Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, it's very evident that given the right approach, any company that owns a large mythology of superheroes that sort of branches out into a lot of unconventional directions can be very successful in going in those directions. And so Fox, given that they have the X-Men, and the X-Men happen to have a cosmic uh, element to the, their mythology as well, it makes perfect sense for Fox to also go in that direction. Essentially what I'm proposing is that Star Dammers could be not the same film as Guardians of the Galaxy, but it could be sort of the Guardians of the Galaxy of the X-Men Cinematic Universe. They are intergalactic pirates. The Star Dammers were created in 1977 by Dave Cockrum, who was the artist for the X-Men at the time. He had proposed giving them their own standalone book. Marvel was reluctant to do so. Perhaps another approach? And so Dave approached Chris Claremont, who was writing the X-Men at the time, and basically asked him to incorporate these characters into the X-Men mythos. Chris Claremont decided to make Corsair Cyclops' father, which established the strong connection needed to merge these worlds. Corsair is the leader of the Starjammers. He's an intergalactic pirate. He's a swashbuckler slash adventurer uh, slash scoundrel. Impudent rebel dog. Pirate traitor. I'm glad you haven't forgotten me. He's basically a mix between uh, Indiana Jones and Captain Sparrow. Ah! Beyond Corsair, we also have the three other core members of the Starjammer, he Hepzibah, Raza, and Cho. Each one has a unique set of characteristics and personalities that make them interesting subjects for a sort of supporting cast of uh, a ragtag group of intergalactic space pirates that would be entertaining, captivating, and everything that one would want from a Film. So the first film could be, of course, an origin tale telling the story of how these characters came together, but more importantly, it could be a revenge tale in which Corsair uh, seeks to take revenge on Daken, the head of the Shi'ar Empire, for killing his wife. Prepare to be destroyed, creature! The Shi'ar are this race of aliens who have a vast empire and at the time are led by the Ken, <laughs> this despotic ruler, <laughs> just hungry for power. <laughs> and one of the things he likes to do is collect various species for his zoo, intergalactic zoo. The story starts out on Earth with the family on an airplane, Corsair, his wife, Catherine, and Cyclops and Havoc, uh, as children, um, all of a sudden this huge alien spaceship appears, uh, attacks the airplane, and so uh, Catherine puts her kids, Scott and Alex, in one parachute, sh uh, sends them off the, off the plane. They think their parents die, but their parents are actually teleported into the starship. And that could be the end of sort of the beginning of the film as well as how much the film deals with uh, Earth itself as well as the connection to the X-Men. I'm just saying. Cut to the present. Corsair is in a prison planet 
That's where he meets uh, the rest of the Star Jammers. They wind up uh, escaping the planet together and they become the Star Jammers. From that point forward, it'll be revealed exactly what happened to Catherine Summers and sort of just take us from there into the revenge tale. The Kens, you've lived too long. That culminates in, in Christopher trying to kill the Ken, but not being able to kill the Ken by the end. Your pathetic efforts gain you nothing. Because if he is able to kill the Ken, then uh, we won't be able to explore some of the other stories, which are the Mkron Crystal, which is uh, a story that needs to be told as well. And then, of course, there was this other child that was cut out of Catherine after she was killed by a Dekin. He grows up a slave, he's tortured, and so as an adult, uh, he manifests mutant powers. Eventually, he winds up taking over the Shi'ar Empire. It's a, it's a really interesting story, and I think it's definitely one worth exploring. You will do it! So there you have it folks, we have a set of characters and a set of storylines that could take the X-Men universe into intergalactic aspect uh, of the, the Marvel universe that Fox is able to tell stories in. And it could be as captivating as Guardians of the Galaxy. All they need is to have the right visionary director and writer to get on board, find the right uh, actors and just and, and take it down. And by taking it down I mean like just made into a successful film. That, that I think everybody would like and I think would further not only enrich Fox, but enrich the cinematic universe that they're creating based on the x -Men. That is where the real value of the Star Jammers lies. There's this very tenuous connection to the X-Men universe, and it could actually eventually play into a crossover between the X-Men and the Star Jammers. Anyway, thank you for checking out my video. Thanks for checking out my YouTube channel, Dr. Remy LeBeau's Exler. And as always, I'd like to remind you to put an X in the box because ain't nobody checking me. <laughs>